Hi guys, I've been uh, asked to put some hints up about this assignment having to do with Snell's Law and Fermat's Principle. So Fermat's Principle says that when light goes from point A to point B, it takes the path that requires the least amount of time. And the notion is that uh, we have in this upper area an index Na, so Na is the index of refraction up here, and Nb is the index of refraction down here. Now it's useful to imagine that the index is different in the two different regions. So this interface between the two is this line, this horizontal line here. And uh, so I'm just going to imagine that the upper area is air and the lower area is glass, say. But actually, it doesn't really matter. In the end, the math will take care of it for you. But just for the purposes of argument, let's assume that Na is less than Nb and that, and that path of least time is going to look a little bit like the path that's actually drawn there. But the point is, for what value of x does the ray take the least time getting from point A to point B? Now, we already argued that in any given medium, the path of least time is a straight line. So the only question is, at what value of x does the ray uh, traverse the two media, the interface between the two media? So I'm going to scrunch this all up here. Let's see. Okay, so let me, uh, let me scrunch this up a little bit, make a little room here to work. And uh, let's do this. Let's calculate the distance between point A and, so let me, point A is up here. The point where the ray crosses the interface is down here. And we need to know the distance between those two points. So let's see if we can cook up an expression for that distance. Let's call that dA. Uh, no, let's don't. Let's call it, let's see, I want to erase that. Let's call that, uh, what, SA, the distance in medium A. By the Pythagorean theorem, I can see that that's the hypotenuse of a triangle. So that's the hypotenuse of the triangle whose length is x squared plus L sub A squared. Right? And so the time in medium A is going to be the distance in medium A divided by the speed in medium A. But of course, the speed in medium A is going to be the speed of light in a vacuum divided by Na. So that's going to be Sa divided by C over Na. The, that's Va right there, huh? But wait a minute. C over Na is in the denominator, so that's going to be Sa N A divided by C. So the time in medium A is the product of two factors, the actual physical distance in medium A times the index in medium A. This is a, a common product in this business, and in fact, it has a name. It's called the optical length. Opt optical length. There we go. I'll give that a name or optical distance in that medium. Of course, you can make the same argument for TB. That's going to be SB over VB, which, of course, is going to turn out to be SB NB over C. Now, the total time from A to B is going to be the sum of those two pieces. So the total time is going to be TA plus TB. Now, I'll let you work out the geometry for SB, it's the hypotenuse of that triangle. Notice that the two legs of that triangle, one of them is LB, but the other leg is not X, it's actually D minus X. You can see it's that little bit right, right there. So this leg right here has a length D minus X, and so it, it's going to get a similar uh, square root of, you know, one leg squared plus the other leg squared. So, but the, the ultimate result is that this is a square root of x squared plus la squared. This is another square root that has an x in it. And what we want to do is to find the value of x that minimizes this total time. So what we need to do is to take the derivative dt dx, the derivative of the time with respect to x, and then set that guy equal to 0 and find the value of x that minimizes that total time. When you get that expression for the value of x that minimizes the total time, 
I want you not to panic because it's going to be complicated, but I want you to look at it and see if you can see in that this result. In other words, Snell's law should come out of this constraint. So this constraint that dt dx is equal to zero should ultimately uh, produce this Snell's law as a consequence. So that's the idea. I hope that helps.